Welcome back to our comprehensive series on imperialism. Today, we're focusing on Asia, specifically diving deep into the stories of China, India, and Japan. Since ancient times, China has been a powerful nation. However, a combination of corruption, internal strife, and outdated institutions led to decline, weakening the power of the emperor. China was relatively closed off to the West because they were self-sufficient and did not need to trade with Europe. Though European merchants, eager for Chinese tea, silk, and porcelain, initiated trade, even though there was little interest in European goods. The British then began trading opium for Chinese goods, leading to social and economic disruption. The Opium Wars followed, where China tried to resist the importation of drugs from British colonies. Despite this, the British Royal Navy was no match, and China was defeated, forcing them to sign unequal treaties, ceding territory, and allowing foreign control over trade. Different foreign powers controlled various spheres of influence within China, weakening its sovereignty and igniting nationalist sentiment that would lead to future political struggles within China. Moving to India, let's explore how it became the crown jewel of the British Empire. Initially a company, not a country. The British East India Company controlled trade, but political maneuvering led to British crown control. In the early 1600s, the British East India Company established trading posts, competing with other European powers. Over time, the British East India Company expanded its influence through trade, diplomacy, and military conquest. By the mid-18th century, they controlled vast territories, not just as trading partners, but as rulers. As control spread, British laws and education were introduced, often clashing with local traditions. India's governance was increasingly tied to British economic interests. Discontent grew, culminating in the Indian Rebellion of 1857. It was a widespread revolt, characterized by both unity and division among Indian forces. The rebellion's suppression led to significant changes. The British government took direct control, ending the rule of the British East India Company. Queen Victoria was proclaimed Empress of India, symbolizing a new era. This ushered in the British Raj, a period where India was governed directly by the British Crown. Railroads, telegraph lines, and infrastructure were built, but often to serve British interests. In Japan, isolationism ruled until the mid-19th century, keeping Western influence at bay. Then came Commodore Perry in 1853, forcing Japan to open its ports, signaling the end of isolationism, and opening Japan up to the United States and to the West. Japan could not resist much of this opening, as its isolationist policy protected its traditions, but left it technologically behind. The Meiji Restoration followed, leading to rapid modernization and embracing Western technology and ideas. Rather than being controlled, Japan became an imperial power itself, mirroring Western nations, and emerged as a significant global player as it expanded across the Pacific. Contrast this with India, where the British East India Company gradually expanded control through diplomacy and force. India became a colony, exploited for its resources. So we see three distinct paths. Japan's bold transformation into a Western-style power, India's subjugation and eventual triumph for independence, and China's struggle against foreign influence. These stories illustrate the complex dynamics of imperialism and the unique character of each nation. This intricate web of interactions shaped modern Asia, leaving a legacy that continues to resonate. We hope this in-depth exploration has provided you valuable insights into this critical period in history. Like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more exciting episodes.